Welcome to another episode of Gibbon Travelogue. We are now in Penang, a vibrant state located on the northwest coast of Peninsular Malaysia. Penang is known for its cultural diversity, which is evident through its multicultural heritage. The state is home to a harmonious mix of Chinese, Malay, Indian and European influences, resulting in a fascinating fusion of traditions, festivals and cuisines. If you're visiting Penang anytime soon, let us introduce you to the top 5 things to do in Penang Island. Number 1. Immerse into Penang's colonial past. Unlike most Malaysian states, the history of modern Penang was shaped by British colonialism, beginning with the acquisition of Penang Island from the Sultanate of Kedah by Sir Francis Light of the British East India Company in 1786. Light is honoured as the founder of Penang and died from malaria in 1794. Let's look at some of the most interesting structures in Penang associated with its colonial past. Fort Cornwallis is a bastion fort built in the late 18th century, exactly at the spot where Francis Light and his crew landed in 1786. At the time of the fort's construction, it was the largest standing fort in Malaysia, although it had never really engaged in combat during its operational history. Greeting visitors at the fort entrance is a statue of Sir Francis Light, who had commissioned the building of the fort to protect the British trade route from foreign military forces and pirates. The statue was sculpted by F.J. Wilcoxon and unveiled in October 1939, just as World War II broke out in Europe. Within the fort, these are some of the interesting highlights. The old chapel of Fort Cornwallis is a colonial gem, built in 1799 for Christian worship. This chapel has the honour of being the first and oldest pig roof colonial era structure that remains standing in Malaysia. Along one side of the grassy field and right next to the chapel are barracks that were used to store armaments, gunpowder and gun carriages. Several of them once operated as offices while others were used as kitchens, guard houses and prison cells. The gunpowder room, also known as a magazine, is located at the southwestern part of the fort and was constructed in 1814. Its massive roof and the surrounding buttresses are typical of magazine buildings of the period and could house 600 barrels of gunpowder. This building is the earliest roof structure surviving in Penang from the colonial era. Old cannons decorate the fort. The largest and most famous is the Siri Rambai cast in 1603 by the Dutch East India Company. When you examine the cannon carefully, it still has the Dutch East India Company logo and the date 1603 engraved on it. Originally a gift from the Dutch to the Sultan of Johor in 1606, the Sri Rambai cannon follows an eventful history of Portuguese and British ownership. Today, Fort Cornwallis is not only a historic icon of Penang's history, but a unique and precious architectural gem to the world. A walk around the fort can be completed in less than an hour, but for a more insightful visit, you can opt for a tour with a knowledgeable guide for free. Another building that is closely linked to Penang's colonial past is the Eastern and Oriental Hotel. We're now at the Eastern and Oriental Hotel, popularly known as e o Hotel. It is a British colonial-style luxury hotel established in 1885 by the Sakis brothers. The success of the brand led the brothers to establish sister hotels, the Raffles Hotel in Singapore in 1887 and the Strand Hotel in Rangoon, present-day Yangon in Myanmar in 1901. And some of their famous guests include the silent movie actor Douglas Fairbanks, author Rudyard Kipling who wrote The Jungle Book, and Charlie Chaplin. So they were all here at this hotel at some point or another. Having failed to adapt to competition following the Second World War, the hotel underwent several decades of decline. And in 1996, 
a decision was made by the management to temporarily close down the hotel for major reconstruction. Under its new owner, the E&O Group, the hotel was reopened to the public in 2001. One of the most famous buildings linked to Penang's colonial past is none other than the former residence of Francis Light, the Suffolk House. Well, right behind us is the Suffolk House uh, and we're here for dinner. The original house used to be the home of Francis Light until his death in 1794. And the current building just behind us was completed in 1809 and that's 214 years. He has served as a resident of several governors of Penang in the past. Today, it is a restaurant managed by the YKH Group. The original house was simply a humble timber and attap garden house, fashioned in a simple Anglo-Indian garden house style, common in British India. Light stayed in this house till his death in 1794. Following his death, a newer Suffolk house replaced the original house. Since then, the Suffolk house has assumed various roles as a residence of governors and a school, before it was later neglected and subsequently restored. The current Suffolk house is a detached double-storied building of Euro-Indian Georgian styling and managed by the YKH group of restaurants. Number two, soak in the Peranakan culture and heritage. The origin of the Peranakans can be traced back to centuries ago when the Chinese came to trade in Southeast Asia. The Chinese then married the local females and their descendants are known as Peranakans, which have their very own distinct culture and customs. The Peranakans retain some practices of Chinese culture, but at the same time, adopt local Malay traditions in terms of language, dressing and food. To have a thorough understanding of the Peranakan heritage in Penang, the place to go to is the Penang Peranakan Mansion. The mansion contains thousands of Peranakan artifacts and antiques as well as showcasing Peranakan traditions and customs. Due to its unique architecture and interior design, reflecting lifestyles of the Baba and Nonyas in early Penang, the mansion has been featured in television series and reality TV shows such as The Little Nonya and The Amazing Race. The mansion was originally called Haikichan, which means the Sea Remembrance Hall in Penang Hokkien. The owner of the mansion is Chong Keng Kui, and he was one of the richest men in Penang at that time. He was also conferred the title Captain China by the British in 1877. In 1893, Chong commissioned the construction of the mansion at a site that was formerly used by the Gihin Secret Society arrival of Chong's Haisan Secret Society. Both societies had clashed in the 1867 Penang riots, which ultimately led to the decline of Gihin. Chong's passing in 1901 saw the languishing of the mansion decades after. Fortunately, in the 1990s, this mansion was acquired, repainted to this original mint green, and restored to its former grandeur by a property developer. Being an avid antique collector, the acquirer furnished the mansion's airy rooms with over 1,000 rare Peranakan antiques from around the world. It took five years of meticulous refurbishment before Penang Peranakan Mansion opened to the public. The mansion is now considered one of the best Peranakan museums in Asia. As we enter the museum, it is as if we have gone back in time and stepped into the home of a wealthy Chinese Peranakan family with its classic wooden furniture, elaborately carved wooden panels, English floor tiles and a hybrid of Chinese and European furnishings throughout. The first floor of the mansion features a central courtyard with an open air well that branches out into an elegant traditional main hall. The dining hall is richly decorated with European-style thick furniture 
affluent Baba households will have a separate western style dining room for entertaining local and European guests. The guide told us that the mirrors in the dining room were placed at strategic positions on the wall so that the head of the family who will be seated at the end of the table would be able to see people from either side of the room. Right through the outdoor compound is the ancestral hall. One of the most important practices of Chinese Peranakan is ancestral worship. They believe that when a person dies, he lives on in the form of a spirit and continues to have influence on his offspring. Therefore, the dead must be worshipped. Ancestral worship is thus not only an act of commemoration of the ancestors, but also a practice of filial piety. At the ancestral hall, the ceramic figurines that grace the archways and roof eaves are truly a sight to behold. An ornate mahogany staircase leads up to the second floor. Here, we walk through the family hall, where we see large portraits of Chong and his family adorning the walls. The family hall is flanked by the bridal chambers where the traditions and practices of newlyweds from different eras are on display. The S-shaped antique chair was meant as a love seat for couples. It is designed in such a way that a couple could be doing their own thing but still able to take glimpses at each other. If you are visiting Penang, you definitely have to include Penang Peranakan Mansion in your must-see list. This is one of our favourite attractions in Penang. Do take advantage of the complimentary guided tour. It really can make a huge difference. Stanley, our museum guide, is able to vividly describe the stories of the mansion and bring us back to those years where Captain Chung and his family actually live here in this place. Another place where you'll be able to appreciate Peranakan architecture and culture is Chong Fat Zee's Blue Mansion, located on Lee Street in Georgetown. We are now in the Chong Fat Zee Mansion, said to be the largest traditional courtyard house in the region. And this particular mansion was built by Chong Fat Zee, a young Hakka Chinese entrepreneur who eventually became one of Southeast Asia's richest businessmen. He lived in this 1904 mansion with three of his favourite wives, raising eight sons. Today, the mansion operates as an opulent and unique heritage hotel. So, actually, uh, many of the places here are condoned off uh, for guests only, and uh, visitors uh, would then have to stay away from those areas. Built by the tycoon Chong Fat Zee at the end of the 19th century, the mansion has 38 rooms and 5 courtyards. It has served as Chong's private residence as well as the seat of his business activities in Penang. The mansion is eclectic but mainly reflects Chinese architectural styles of the imperial period. Interesting features of the house include Gothic loof windows and English floor tiles made of encaustic clay in geometric pieces, all shaped to fit to a perfect square. In 1989, a group of local Penang Knights purchased the mansion from John Fat Zee's descendants to possibly save the building from encroaching development or even demolition. Currently, the property operates as an 18-room hotel cum museum as part of the adaptive reuse of a heritage building. The mansion has been featured in various films, including The Crazy Rich Asians. Okay, this is the end of the first part of our video. In the next video, we will continue with another three exciting things to do in Penang. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more travel content. Till the next video, take care.